7.4, double angle and half angle identities. So this section, at the end of the section, this will mark the uh, halfway point between 7.1 and 7, I believe it's 8. So this is the, the first half of uh, chapter 7. So 7.4 is new to my pre-APs, not new to my duels up until the first half of this section. So the second half of this section, which I might split this up into two videos, we'll see how long it is. Uh, the first half is something my duels have already seen, not the second half. So we'll get right into it then. Double angle identities for sine, cosine, and tangent. These are directly related to the sum and difference identities that we looked at in the previous section, 7.3. So you'll notice there are three of them for cosine. Cosine 2a, cosine 2a, and another cosine 2a. Now this uh, has to do with, well first off, we can derive one of them using the sum or difference identity. And then we can play around with the result of the first one uh, a couple of ways and produce two more results. So what I'll do is I'll actually show you where the... Uh, the, the formulas come from. I'll move this over to the side. So cosine 2a. 2a just means 2 times a. And the way that we define multiplication, 2 times a, you take a and you add it with itself for a repeated total of 2 times, which that 2 is this 2. So really, the reason why I'm showing that is because cosine 2a is going to be figured out by replacing 2a with the equivalent a plus a. a plus a is 2a algebraically. And uh, the reason why I like a plus a in place of 2a, it's because I can apply the sum formula for cosine then to figure out what this expression is equal to. So cosine, 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 sine, sine, sine. So there's two cosines left, cosine a, cosine a. Sine, sine, sine means you change the sine. Let me redo that a. So minus sine A times sine A. So there's my formula for cosine 2A, but it could continue a little further. Cosine A times cosine A is the same thing as cosine squared A minus sine squared A. And this is my formula for cosine 2A, or at least one of them, because there were three. So cosine 2A is cosine squared A minus sine squared a, and that's what I'm going to write in the first one. So my first double angle identity, cosine squared a minus sine squared a. And that's from the cosine, 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 sine, sine, sine formula. You just take 2a as a plus a. So then it's cosine a times cosine a minus sine a times sine a, just like you would uh, have figured out using the sum formula. So that's the first variation of the formula. Uh, you'll notice the cosine squared minus sine squared uh, a quantity looks a lot like the Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity says that if you add sine squared and cosine squared, you get 1. So what happens if I subtract them? Uh, you get cosine 2a. Nothing really happens. So it's not like 0 or anything or negative 1. Uh, it's just it's different when you subtract and when you add. When you add them, you get 1. When you subtract them, you get cosine of the double of the angle a. So it stays that way. So where do the other two come from then? Cosine 2a, cosine 2a. They come from the Pythagorean identity I was just talking about. If you take sine and replace it with 1 minus cosine squared a in that formula, you also get a second version or variation of the cosine 2a formula. So we get cosine squared a, which is how it starts out. But instead of minus sine squared a, you're going to minus or subtract the equivalent for co, um, sine squared a. So it's 1 minus cosine squared a in place of sine squared a because of the Pythagorean identity. So that's one way. Uh, this is going to equal 2. Cosine squared a, distribute the minus sine in front. So that's minus 1 plus cosine squared a. And you get 2 cosine squared a and then minus 1 if we combine these two. There's another variation. That's actually the third one that's in the textbook listed in order. So if, if you're looking at the textbook PDF, which I also give the PDFs for each individual textbook section, this is the third one. So this is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. The second one is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And you can already guess where that one comes from. That one comes from, same idea, 
instead of replacing sine squared a with 1 minus cosine squared a, why don't you leave sine the way it is, and you replace the cosine squared, so that way it's a 1 minus sine squared instead. So that way we get two sines. So then this, cosine 2a, is equal to 1 minus sine squared a in place of cosine squared, and then minus sine squared a, because that's the second part of the formula. This equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And you don't have to distribute anything in there. You just drop the parentheses. Negative sine squared minus sine squared is minus 2 sine squared. That's the second variation of the formula. The third one that we did in order, but in the textbook, they list them in this particular order. The cosine squared minus sine squared first, 1 minus 2 sine squared second, and then the 2 cosine squared minus 1 uh, third is the way that the textbook orders them. So then we have sine 2a. Where does that one come from? So sine 2a, we do the exact same thing as we did for the initial of the three variants for cosine. Sine of 2 times a, that's the double of angle a. You think of this as sine a plus a. And we apply the formula, which in this case it's sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine a. They're all a's though sine a cosine a the second one can be written as sine a cosine a because you could switch the order of multiplication if you want i wrote a b in there there's no b it's an a and notice how they match these two so you can just double them two sine a cosine a that believe it or not if you take it in uh, if you take calculus and uh, uh what's it called uh, further semesters of calculus most everybody if you're taking calculus uh, except here in the valley. Here in the valley, uh, they're a little bit more lenient. You might not have to take calculus if you're not going to major in engineering, uh, the medical field, uh, the business realm of things, economics and stuff like that. If you're staying away from business, medical field, and engineering, which is basically most everybody, uh, but if you're staying away from those areas and you stay here in the valley, you might not have to ever deal with the calculus course. If you're leaving the valley, though, doesn't matter what uh, what majors you're going to have. Uh, they usually make you take calculus anyway, uh, if not stats. So for the most part, if you're leaving the valley uh, for college, you'll have to take a calculus course most likely, unless they let you replace it with statistics. But if you're having to take calculus, you'll have to take at least a full year's worth of calculus, two semesters worth. And in your second semester is where all this trig stuff comes back again. And uh, that's something you're going to have to remember back on your own and study on your own. Of course, there's internet, Google, you can figure out and uh, give a list of all these identities and uh, work on your own to figure out how to memorize these things all over again, because by that time, you'll have forgotten all of it. But uh, believe it or not, this is one of the only formulas I still remember from when I was taking those calculus courses, because it's a very easy one to memorize. Sine 2a equals 2 sine a cosine a. And it's, uh, I don't know why I remember that one, but not the cosine ones, even though there are three for the ones for cosine. The only one for sine I still remember to this day. Uh, that's kind of an easy one to memorize. So 2 sine a, cosine a. And that's what that's the only one for sine. I guess there's other ways that you can write it out, but it's not really beneficial to know the other ways to write it out. Then there's one for tangent. And the one for tangent, to figure that one out, same way as we figured these out. Tangent 2a is equal to tangent a plus a. And the tangent a plus b formula, you just replace b with a. You get tangent a plus tangent a divided by 1 minus tangent a times tangent a. And we can simplify. On top, tangent a plus tangent a is 2 times tangent a. On the bottom, 1 minus tangent a tangent a, that's tangent a squared, or tangent squared a. And that's the actual formula for tangent 2a. So let me write that over here. 2 tangent a divided by 1 minus tangent squared a. And those are the double angle identities for the three trig functions, cosine, sine, and tangent. Cosine's first. And that's because it has the most variance, so we do those first.
sine has one, tangent has one, cosine has three. So then we'll go ahead and apply these facts for example one. Now let me go ahead and skip through the examples just to see how many there are. I'm not going to do everything, and if I do, I might have to cut this video in half, like I said earlier. So examples one through, I know I'm not going to do four. Four for sure I'm not going to do. So we're not going to get tested, and this is probably not one that I'm going to test either way if I was going to test you guys. Now dual, I'm going to test you guys, but I'm not going to give you something like this on the test. So that's not something I would go over. I'm not doing example five either. These application problems are not really uh, <clears throat> too, too important. You might see them in a physics class, but uh, the physics portions are more important. So the the pre-calculus applications are not very, very important. We are going to go over the sum to product and product to sum formulas in examples six and seven, but nothing too crazy. It's only those two examples, one of each. And then there's half angle identities. This is where I'd probably cut the video in half if we don't have enough time to uh, fit all this stuff into one video. So we're doing examples one through three for sure, it looks like. Yeah, so one through three. So you want to emphasize in your notes, if you haven't seen this section yet, so examples one through three. So we'll look at example number one. Sine of theta is equal to eight over 17. Cosine theta is less than zero. So this kind of looks like a problem that we saw in the previous section. It's just a little bit different uh, in what information is given. Earlier they told us that the angle theta was between this number and this number, and we can say what uh, quadrant it's in. The reason why they gave me cosine is less than zero is because I could still figure out what quadrant it's in. Knowing that sine is positive, 8 over 17, and knowing that cosine is, in this case, negative, less than zero, sine is positive, cosine is negative, means we are in the second quadrant. So theta is in quadrant 2. That I know for sure. Theta is in quadrant 2. And why is that important? Well, because I'm well, if you look at what they want us to find, sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and then tangent 2 theta. This is the one where I'm going to have some trouble figuring out the sine. So I need to know that tangent is, uh, I need to know what quadrant it's in in order for me to figure out exactly what tangent's going to be. So we'll get to that in a bit. So they want sine of 2 theta. I can call this part A, this one part B, and this one part C just to split it up and make it a little bit more organized in our notes. So we'll look at part A sine 2 theta, which is a formula for sine 2 theta, 2 sine theta, cosine theta. It's not a hard one to memorize. So sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Well, I'm given sine theta, so I could directly plug that one in. That's 8 over 17. They didn't give me cosine theta, though, so that one I have to work for. And uh, you should already be able to guess how we're going to find cosine. The way that we should be able to find cosine is by using the Pythagorean identity. If we remember, cosine theta is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. And I exaggerated that square root symbol. Okay, so 1 minus uh, sine squared theta, which they gave a sine. So I could plug it in and square it. So square root 1 minus 8 over 17 squared 8 I know, 17 I don't, so i got to figure that one out. 1 minus 64, and what's 17 squared? I mostly know up to 15, my squares. So I'm going to have to try to figure out what 17 squared is. 17 squared, well first off, 17 is 10 plus 7. That makes it easier in my head. And uh, to square that, it's 100 plus 70 plus 70 plus 49 you do FOIL basically 10 times 7, or 10 plus 7, again, times 10 plus 7. And you distribute 10 and 10, 10 and 7, 7 and 10, and then 7 and 7. That's where I got the 270s and the 49. So that's 100 plus 140 is 240 plus 49, 289. So because I didn't know my squares past 15, uh, actually I know 16, 16, 256. So I just didn't know 17. 17 is 289 now. So now I know. So that's 289. Plus minus square root, the 1 is 289 minus 289. This is kind of going to suck because I have to figure out what 64 taken away from 289 is. Subtraction. I'm trying to be old school here and try to do this in my head. 
Fact is, I grew up with calculators just like you guys, pretty much. Uglier calculators, bulkier and uglier. Well, they were just 83s, but I'm trying to, like, completely become independent of that stuff. So see how I can do this. I think these are pretty simple numbers. Square root, 289 minus 64. There's really no, like, borrowing or carrying over that i got to worry about. That is 225, and that's a very nice number, by the way. 225 is 15 squared, so I can square root that. 15 over 17, no problem. So it kind of worked out. So these are somewhat nice numbers, except I had to figure out what 17 squared was. But that I should have known already. Yeah, but anyway, so we get plus or minus 15 over 17. Now, the question is now, plus or minus? They kind of already told me, though. They told me that cosine is negative over there. So cosine's negative, so we disregard the positive. And I probably could have done that from the beginning and not have written plus minus and just got rid of the plus and just thought of it as negative right away. So if you were already able to see that right away, that's good. I wasn't able to, so whatever. So negative 15 over 17 is what we get for cosine theta. And uh, why did I need that? I needed that for here. So we plug that in. 2 times 8 over 17, that was given times what we found by hand that we had to work for, negative 15 over 17. The end result is negative. Oh, and I already see immediately I ran out of space because right here is example two, and I'm only doing part A so far. So maybe I'm not going to require that much more space. If anything, I'll just uh, move some stuff around. So let's see. Two times eight over 17 times negative 15 over 17. It's going to be the same thing as negative two times eight times 15. I just move the negative to the way front and then over 17 squared because there's only 17s in the denominators, which I already know what 17 squared is now. So either way, negative two times eight times 15. And how do I do that? In my mind, to make that easy, I'm going to multiply two and 15 together first. And that gives me what, 30? So 30 times eight, which I could just think of three times eight, which is 24 add a zero, negative 240. 17 squared, 289. Now, 240 has a lot of factors. 240 is a composite number with a large amount of factors. It's divisible by 2, it's divisible by 4, divisible by 8, divisible by 3, divisible by 12, divisible by a bunch of numbers, 24, 10, 5. Uh, but 28 is a good number uh, in that sense, uh, that it's only divisible by 17. Uh, not 28, sorry, 289. 289 is only divisible by 17 because it's 17 squared. 17 is a prime number. So what does that mean? Those don't reduce at all because 289 is only divisible by 17. 17 does not divide 24 or 240. So we box that and that's it for sine of 2 theta. So that's it for just part A. I still need part B, which might have a lot of work left. I'm going to get rid of these underlying thingies. I'm going to move this up to the side just a little bit. Maybe squeeze that in between over here somewhere. It should fit there. And then this back over here. This is work I need. I might be able to get away with just moving that over here. So that should be good. And then part B. Let's see how much room I need for part B. Cosine 2 theta. Now... If I forget about the work that we just did and all the stuff that's given, cosine 2 theta has three different variations. Cosine squared a, or cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, and then 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. I'm good to choose any one of those. So what I have so far, what was given was 8 over 17. We worked out what cosine is, and that's negative 15 over 17, and I'm pretty confident we got that right. Because I have both sine and cosine for the angle, I get to use any of those three that are there. So I can use whichever one I want, and I get to pick however I want. And that's totally up to you, but because I'm the one making the video, I'm in the one, I'm the one that's going to choose. And uh, the way that I'll choose, 8 over 17 was given. The negative 15 over 17 that we found was not given. What if we made a mistake with the, uh, with the negative 15 over 17? That's not actually the answer. So I'm confident it's right, but what if it's not right and this were a test or a quiz or something like that? I don't want to plug in wrong information. I only want to plug in the correct information that was given. 
So what that means is the sign was given. I'm going to choose the formula that only has a sign in it, if that makes sense, I hope. So 1 minus 2 sine squared is the one I'm going to end up choosing, and that's the reason behind it. It's because it only depends on sine. Sine was given. So this is 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. 1 minus 2 times, well, sine squared is 8 over 17. We square that. 1 minus 2, 64 over 289. Now that I know the square of 17. We multiply 64 by 2. Hopefully not a multiply by 2. That's 128 over 289. That's a common number. Uh, that Those are powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, 256, 512, so on. So i got to subtract that from 1. The way to do that, though, is you think of the 1 as 289 over 289. That one's easy. If you're subtracting from 1, it's just the denominator of the other one over itself. So 289 minus 128 over 289. So we just subtract the numerators. And that one, I think, is an easy one. There's no carryovers or borrowing or anything like that. If I line them up, that's going to be 161 over 289. So, so far, I've been able to get away with all this without having to use a calculator. I have one ready to the side just in case if these numbers get a little out of hand. But I think that's it for cosine 2 theta. That's already simplified. It's a single fraction, 161. If I were to guess, 161 is a prime number. Uh, definitely relatively prime uh, when you group it together with 289. Okay, so letter C. So this is all work that we did on the side. Hopefully letter C doesn't require too much work. If not, I'm having to go to the outside for some more space. But letter C, tangent 2 theta. There's a formula for tangent 2 theta. And uh, maybe I should practice using the formula for tangent 2 theta, but I'm sure examples 3 2 and 3, that is, will have us go over it. No, it doesn't look like it, so I might have to use it. Not that I have to, but it's it's good practice for me as a teacher to do it because we want to see how to work that out. So if I go by the formula, strictly by the formula, 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta is the formula. But now i got to figure out what tangent theta is. I don't think that's going to be too hard. How do I find out what tangent theta is? So more side work. Tangent theta, your go-to is usually the quotient identity, sine theta over cosine theta. That's usually what I resort to immediately when I'm asked to find what tangent of an angle is. So we have both of those, sine and cosine. Sine was given, and sine is 8 over 17. And that's going to get divided by cosine, which we found, negative 15 over 17. Now, if you were paying attention to the previous video, law of the sandwich, we uh, get rid of those 17s. 8 over negative 15 is the result for tangent theta. And that's what I'm plugging in over here. So 2 times negative 8 over 15 over 1 minus negative 8 over 15 squared. And I'm definitely going to need more space than this. So let's see what I can do. I might have to move, let's see. I don't know what I can do. I will just keep on. So 2 times negative 8 over 15, that's negative 16 over 15, and then I'll just deal with, it, deal with it when I have to deal with it. That's 1 plus 64 over 225. And I'm going to have to move this. So for now, I'll just put it over here. Okay, so uh, I had to edit out that little bit, or it wasn't a little bit. Uh, I had to edit out a certain amount of work. And that's because I noticed there was a mistake, and I didn't notice until it was really, really late into the problem. So I had done a lot of work, but based off of a false thing. So uh, there was a plus sign in between the 1 and 64 over 25 in the denominator. 
that should have been a minus, not a plus. So this minus, and I have, for some reason, this minus, that is. For some reason, I wrote a plus sign, and I don't know why I did. And then I kept going with it. So uh, what ended up happening is I checked using two different methods to see if they matched up and they didn't match up. And it was because of that plus sign that was supposed to be a minus sign. So with that minus sign there, the idea is you want to multiply this, or no, let's see. You want this to simplify into one fraction on the bottom. So it's negative 16 over 15 divided by, that's going to be 225 minus 64 over 225. And if you subtract them, you're going to have to borrow a bit. So that takes a little while. There's going to be a 1. So negative 16 over 15 over, there's a 225 in the bottom. It's going to end in a 1. That would be a 161. <clears throat> so 161 on the bottom. I couldn't apply the law of the sandwich on this thing because uh, the 15 and the 225 don't match. The nice thing is they contain common factors, so I can multiply out at least the common factors, 15 and 15. So one route I can take is I can multiply 15 on both sides. That's going to leave a 15 on the bottom, and I'll just multiply by 15 again. So what I could do just to overcome that and get this done in one step, multiply by the bigger one, 225, just to get it all done in one shot. So that's going to equal to... Well, the 15 reduces with the 225 and results in a 15, so that's negative 16 times 15. And then on the bottom, the 225 is completely cancel, and you're left with 161. So then i got to figure out what 16 times 15 is, which that was part of the work that I edited out. So uh, now I know how to do it, but I'll just show you the work that I did. So what I said earlier is that I don't know how to do that in my head, and because I don't want to chicken out and do this on a calculator. We can do this by hand. So 16 times 15, well, I'll write the 15 outside. 16 inside as 10 plus 6. And you distribute the 15. 15 and 10 is 150. 15 and 6 is 90. 240. So you get negative 240 over 161. And as far as I can tell, 240 and 161 are relatively prime. That's the way, or that's that's the way it's going to be for this particular problem. And that's the value for tangent of 2 theta, and we're done with this problem. Now, earlier, I had said there was more than one way to get this done, and I ended up going with the way that was most instructional with regards to the formulas themselves. So I wanted to show how the formula was actually used. So we went with the formula route. Some of you might have already seen ahead of time uh, that there's an, a way easier way to do this, and uh, I skipped that easier method because I wanted to show you what the formula looked like. But um, if this were a quiz or a test and I gave you this exact problem or a problem that was just like this, where they asked for three parts, sine, cosine, then tangent, to find tangent, you just take the two previous parts for sine and cosine, divide them, because tangent is the same thing as sine divided by cosine. So you could have taken these two right here and divided them. So if I had taken these two and divided them, negative 240 divided by 280, or over 289, divided by 161 over 289. Remember the law of the sandwich thing, the 289s cancel, you're left with negative 240 over 161, which is exactly what we got over here. And that took a lot less time to figure out. Uh, but the idea is maybe you didn't know sine and cosine, they only asked for tangent two theta. Then that's the route you would take to figure it out. You would use the formula. This one you would have used just sine over cosine, the quotient identity. So more than one way to get this done, and that's a lot of work for this particular problem. So that's example one. We'll move on to example two then. So for example two, find the values of the six trig functions of theta, given that cosine two theta is negative 12 over 13, and that theta is in what quadrant is that? Quadrant three? between 180 and 270, that's quadrant three. So find sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. So all six of those. Given that cosine two theta, so cosine two theta is equal to 12 over 13. So let's say I wanted to find out what sine of theta is. How would I do it? Well, I'd have to use the fact that cosine 2 theta is 12 over 13, obviously, and it's not 12 over 13, it's a negative. 
12 over 13. Whoops. So I'm going to move that, put a negative sign in front of it, just a little bit this way, and then negative. And then, because that's cosine 2 theta, I'm going to look back at the formulas that I have available, and remember there's three of them, and I kind of already have circled the one that we need. We have cosine 2 theta, you plug that in, you solve for sine. So there's a formula there with only sine in it, that's the one I'm going to use. So cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine theta, uh, squared theta. That's the second variant of the cosine double angle formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for sine squared. So to solve for sine squared, you'd probably add this thing, you'd add this thing to both sides. You're going to end up getting 2 sine squared theta is equal to 1 plus 12 over 13. Let me double check that all that's correct because I tend to make mistakes and have to edit stuff out. And yeah, it looks fine. So 2 sine squared theta is equal to 1 plus 12 over 13. You divide everything by 2 and not before combining these. That would be 25 over 13. Because 1 is 13 over 13, 13 over 12, or sorry, 13 over 13 plus 12 over 13 is 13 plus 12 over 13. 13 plus 12 is 25. So 2 sine squared theta is equal to that, or sine squared theta by itself is equal to that divided by 2. If you divide a fraction by 2, it's the same as multiplying the denominator by 2. So 25 over 26. Square root both sides. Sine theta is equal to positive or negative, 5 over the square root of 26, because you can evaluate the square root of 25, but not the square root of 26, though, which we can rationalize plus minus 5 square root 26 over 26. Now, which is it, positive or negative? We're in quadrant 3, sine is negative. Which I could have put that in there from the start. So sine is negative. So that's good work. I'm going to move this over to the side over here because I'm definitely going to need more room for the other five trig functions. So I can go over here somewhere. I might want to go ahead and erase this and move this further up. So that way it fits. So keep in mind, they wanted six total trig functions. I only found one. Well, that's kind of a lie. I know one more. If I know sine, I also know cosecant, because cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. Would that be negative square root of 26 over 5? I think it would be. So you just take the reciprocal of the first one, not the second one, because if you take the reciprocal of the second one, you have to re-rationalize, and why do that if you could just take the first one and flip it? So there's two out of the six, so I'm one-third done. So that's sine and cosecant. Next, maybe cosine and secant. So let's try to find cosine theta. So what is cosine theta equal to? Well, to find cosine theta, I might want to use another form of the cosine 2 theta formula. So I might want to go with this one, because this one links cosine 2 theta and cosine squared theta. Solve for cosine by square rooting, and we should be able to figure it out. So they gave me cosine 2 theta was equal to negative 12 over 13, and that's supposed to equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, according to the third version of that cosine 2 theta formula. Solve for cosine theta by moving some stuff around. So you get 1 plus, actually 1 minus 12 over 13. So what I'm doing is I'm adding the 1 both sides, basically. So 1 and then minus 12 over 13, because 12 over 13 is negative, equals to 2 cosine squared theta. You simplify the stuff on the left, so that's 1 minus 12 over 13, that's 1 over 13, equals 2 cosine squared theta. You divide this by 2 and you get 1 over 26 is cosine squared theta. Square root both sides and you get cosine theta is equal to positive and negative. In this case, it's going to be negative because we're in quadrant 3. 1 over the square root of 26, because the square root of 1 is 1. 
and you would rationalize this. Negative square root of 26 over 26, and that's the value for cosine theta. Both sine and cosine are negative because we're in the third quadrant. Secant is negative square root of 26 then because of the reciprocal identity. Now we're two thirds done and I need tangent and cotangent. So tangent and cotangent. We want tangent of theta and then eventually cotangent of theta, but whatever we get for tangent of theta, it's gonna, uh, we'll take the reciprocal of that and we're gonna get cotangent. So tangent, this one is nice and easy. Hopefully it's nice and easy. Uh, my go-to formula for tangent, if I already have sine and cosine for the angle theta, which I do, uh, then you divide sine by cosine for theta. And that's usually the way that you want to go about this. There is a formula for, actually, no, there isn't a formula because we're just looking for tangent of theta by itself, not tangent of 2 theta. So we just take the values that we got for sine and cosine already and just divide the two. should be pretty simple. So sine of theta is negative 5 square root of 26 over 26, and that's going to end up getting divided by cosine, which is negative square root 26 over 26. And we've seen this over and over and over again. When we're dividing two fractions that have the same denominator, those denominators go away, and uh, you'll be left with the two numerators. The one on top is the new numerator, and the one on the bottom is the new denominator. Okay, so we're not done here, and we notice a couple of things can cancel out. The negatives go away, and the square root 26 is common in both. So after all is said and done, we're left with just 5. So tangent of theta is literally just 5. And we're almost done, because uh, we want cotangent of the same angle theta, and that's just equal to 1 over 5, the reciprocal of tangent. So tangent of theta and cotangent of theta, once we already had sine and cosine, which that took a lot of work for sine and cosine, once we had both of those, this was relatively easy. So uh, to find all six, though, there's the work for that. So for example three, simplifying expressions using double angle identities, we want letter A. And these are a lot like in the previous uh, two sections, 7.2, 7.3, where they kind of plugged in and only showed you the right-hand side of the uh, result of plugging in uh, to one of those identities. And uh, basically, you're just trying to spit out the left-hand side. This one is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. And what they're doing is we're just replacing a with 5x or 5x with a. So that's just whatever's inside the argument. That's just an angle. So 2 cosine squared a minus 1. That is the right-hand side of the third variant for cosine 2a. But since a is 5x, this is cosine 10a, or 10x. And that's it. Which x is a variable, so it doesn't go, it doesn't go any further than that. So it'll stay that way as a variable expression. So let's look at 165, or uh, letter B with the 165 angle in it. So sine, we can call that a, cosine a. This is sine a, cosine a, where a is 165, which I'll deal with the 165 later. Sine a, cosine a. So if I look back at either of those formulas, I think that's the sine 2a one. I already have it boxed. So sine 2a is 2 sine a, cosine a. So let me write that down. So let's see, sine 2a is 2 sine a cosine a, but we have sine a cosine a without the 2. So then what do I do? We divide this by 2. And this is just equal to sine 2a and then everything divided by 2. And that's from the 
formula, there was just a missing two. So we divided out the two, basically. So then I got to figure out the rest of this. A has a value, and it's 165 degrees. So that's sine of 2 times 165. 165 times 2. That is 330. So sine of 330. And then that's divided by 2. We don't stop there because we know what sine of 330 is, or at least we should remember. Unit circle. Sine of 330 is 30 degrees this way. 330 degrees this way. So then it matches with sine of 30. If I want sine of this angle, you want the y coordinate, which the x coordinate is square root of 3 over 2, the y coordinate is 1 half. x coordinate is still square root of 3 over 2, y coordinate is negative 1 half. That's what this is negative 1 half divided by 2, negative 1 fourth is the answer. Sounds kind of a weird one. But that's it for example three. Which we're skipping examples four and five. And that's going to be the first half of the video. So we'll stop here for now. And there's going to be a second video for the second half of seven four.